buffer solutions. We prepare a buffer solution by adding 7.44 grams of HCl to a 1 liter 0.322 molar solution of NH3. The dissociation constant, Kb, of NH3 is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Make the approximation that the volume stays constant at 1 liter. The temperature stays at 25 degrees Celsius. A. Calculate the pH of the solution before adding the HCl. B. Calculate the pH of the solution after adding the HCl. C. We add 0.015 moles of NaOH after adding the HCl. Calculate the new pH of the solution. Part A. Before adding the HCl, the solution contains only NH3. Even if you're not familiar with NH3, we can still figure out that it's a base, since we know we will be creating a buffer solution by mixing it with an acid. Alone in solution, NH3 will create its conjugate acid. It will steal a proton from water to create some NH4 plus and some OH minus. The Kb represents the ratio of moles of NH3 that will dissociate. We will use an ice table for all three parts of this question. We insert the concentration of NH3 given in the question. Initially, the solution will not have any dissociated ions. The NH3 will dissociate a certain quantity of moles, represented by x. Since the coefficients are all 1 in the equation, both products will gain the same amount of moles that NH3 will lose. Here's what we will have at equilibrium. To determine the value of x, we will use the dissociation constant. We insert the values into our equation. We are going to need the quadratic equation. However, to save time, we can ignore the subtraction of x if the value of x is less than 5% of the original concentration. Let's do the calculation using this approximation. We get a value of 0.002475 moles per liter. To see if using the 5% rule was okay, we divide our answer by the initial concentration, 0.322 molar, and multiply by 100. The value of x is 0.75% of the initial concentration of NH3. This is less than 5%, so the change in the concentration of the base was very minimal and our approximation was valid. If it had been more than 5%, we would have had to go back and use the quadratic equation, because the subtraction of x would have to be taken into account. Next, we can find the pH in two steps. We will use the pOH. The KB was given with two significant digits, so we round our answer to two significant digits. Don't forget that for pH and other log functions, the digits before the decimal do not count as significant digits. The pH is 11.38. Part B. Let's start by writing the equation. The Cl- from the HCl does not react, so we don't include it. We put an arrow that only goes in one direction because HCl is a strong acid that will react completely in solution. We will use an ice table. To be able to work with the mass of HCl that was given to us, we need to divide it by its molar mass to find out how many moles we will be adding. Frequently in these kinds of questions, the volume of the solution changes and we need to do dilution calculations. Sometimes it's easier to avoid this and just to use the mole values. In this question, the volume stays constant, so it's not a problem. Since the volume stays at 1 liter, the concentrations are equal to the number of moles. So in this solution, we have 0.322 moles of NH3 and 0.20406 moles of HCl. The HCl will push the reaction completely towards the products until there are no reactants left. There are fewer moles of H plus than of NH3, so H plus is the limiting reagent and will be used up completely. At equilibrium, there is an important quantity of NH3 and its conjugate acid. The buffer solution has been created. Now we need to find the pH. We will use the conjugate acid to base ratio in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. We insert the concentration of the base at the top and that of the conjugate acid on the bottom. We don't know Ka, but we can find it from our Kb. To do so, we divide the constant of water by Kb. At 25 degrees Celsius, K of water is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Next, to determine our pKa, we need to take the negative log of our Ka. Now our equation is complete. Rounding to two significant digits, the pH after adding the HCl is 9.02. Part C. 
We will keep the pH, Ka, and the concentrations in our buffer solution for this part of the question. The 0.015 moles of base that we add to the buffer solution will react with the acid NH4 plus inside the solution to create NH3 and water. The Na plus from the NaOH is a spectator ion and will not react, so we won't include it in the equation. NaOH is a strong base, so the ions will push the reaction completely towards the products until there are no more reactants. Initially, we have the moles of NH3 and NH4 plus in our buffer solution that we calculated in part B, plus the moles of OH- that were added. We notice that the OH- is the limiting reagent and will be completely consumed in the reaction. All the moles of base are absorbed when the NH4 plus is converted into NH3. Remember that the moles in the change row are multiplied by the coefficients of the molecules, but here they are all ones. At the end, we only have NH4 plus and NH3 left. Finally, to calculate the pH, we have to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. We insert our new concentration values for NH3 and NH4 plus. The pKa does not change. Rounding to two significant digits, the pH of our buffer solution after adding the base is 9.10. For the quantity of base that was added, the pH only went from 9.02 to 9.10. This demonstrates the usefulness of buffer solutions. They keep the pH fairly stable.